Hi, welcome to Mathematics with Tom. I am Tom, and today we are going to talk about the confidence intervals based on a normal distribution. So I have drawn a picture here. I have a normal distribution, and we're, and we're going to label this. This is just any normal distribution, so it has a, a mean of mu, and has a standard deviation of sigma. So the, the mean goes right here in the middle, like we would expect, and then this would be one, this, this, this next point here is, is, well, it's a couple of things. One thing that it is, is it is mu plus one sigma. And this next point, it would be mu plus two sigmas. And, but remember what we called mu plus one sigma, that is a z-score of one. Or well, here's a z-score of two. And we could go the other way if we said that if we have mu minus a sigma, that was when z is minus one. And remember at mu, that's when z is zero. Okay, so now we have our relations drawn here. But what I want to do is we've been spending time finding using the normal distribution to find percentiles or to find probabilities. Today we're going to turn the problem completely upside down and use a confidence interval to find the mean. Now you might say we know the mean, and the answer is yes, we do. But what we're going to do is develop the idea and then see it in application. So here's what I want to do. Imagine this. Imagine that. Um, Imagine that we have, um, that we randomly select some, some value x. So let's just say, uh, we'll just say x is maybe like right about there. So what I would say, so what I want to do then is I want to say, let's find the probability of randomly selecting some x, some x value that's uh, above mu minus a sigma, whoops, let's scoot that over, and it's below mu plus one sigma. Well, we know that. I mean, we could look it up in the charts and take it out to the uh, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, but we, we're just going to use the empirical rule, and we already know the answer then. We know that that probability is 0 0.68. That's the probability of some data value um, very simply just being between one, one standard deviation above or below the mean. So that is this region in here on our normal distribution. Okay? There. Now, well, also this problem would, could be written as, um, yeah, you know what? Let's just write it that way. Now we know a few more things about this. This is also the same as the probability the, of a z-score, of a z-score between negative one and one. And again, the answer would still be 0 0.68. So let's put this information together and see what we can find. Well, let's think about this. The formula for a z-score is, it's the data minus mu divided by uh, divided by standard deviation. Well, in this problem, we have two stand we have two of these values. One of these that we have here is that we have um, let's see we have one is equal to x minus mu. Oops, x minus mu over sigma, and we also have this other value that minus one. I'll write it this way of x minus mu over sigma is equal to minus one. Okay, well now let's solve, we're going to solve, solve both equations, solve both equations for mu. Oh, well, let's do that. So I'm gonna make some, I'll just note this. The first thing I'm gonna do is multiply both sides of each equation by sigmas. And we'll always use a different color here so you could, we can see our changes that we're making. So then I have um, my first top left equation becomes one sigma is equal to x minus mu. And our other equation becomes 
x minus mu equals minus one sigma. Now normally you, you wouldn't write the one sigma, you could just write a minus sigma, but I want to keep track of that one because that is, rep, one represents a z-score of one. So then let's uh, continue this. We're going to, uh, let's see, we're going to subtract the x from both sides. So when I do that, I would write this as a minus x plus one sigma is equal to a minus mu. And over here, I'm going to have a minus mu equals minus x minus 1 sigma. Multiply both sides, both equations, both sides by negative 1. And our result then is that x minus 1 sigma equals mu. And, and mu equals x plus 1 sigma. In other words, what we've just said is this, is we've said um, the probability probability of mu between these values, these values, and we're going to write those in a moment. These values is 0 0.68. And if I write this formally, if you'd write this, you'd say that this is x minus 1 sigma. That's going to be less than mu. There's a 68% that mu is between that and x plus 1 sigma. And this, this is called the confidence interval. Confidence interval. And in this case, we are 68% we are confident that our mean is contained somewhere in that interval. Now, before we go on, we need, to, we need to deal with a bit more. So let me do this. First off, I'm going to just shade the green region, the 0.68. And the 0.68, this is the 0.68. This is our confidence level, our confidence level. Okay, that's our confidence level. Now, and notice this, that in our problem here, oops, that should have been a, I have a mistake I need to fix. This shouldn't be a z equals one. This should be a z equals a minus one. Now, notice this, that we have these two values, these border values. We have a z is negative one, and we have a z is a positive one. So in order to find a confidence interval, you need two z values. You need two z values. So that brings up some additional notation. What that is, is this, is we call these the z values in the confidence interval, and right there is where they are. There's, there's the z value that we use for one, negative one and one, and we call these z of alpha over two. Well, what is alpha over two? Well, alpha over two would be shaded in like this pretty pink color. Alpha over two, this, the entire alpha, is what's out here in this left, we call it the left tail, and the right tail. Well, what is alpha over two? Well, let's just think about this. Well, notice if I've shaded 0.68. Well, then this the left tail over here, if I took one minus 0 0.68, that would give me the total pink region, but this is just half of that, so it's over two. In other words, and so is the other side. This right side is the other alpha over two alpha over two, and so you can see that in this case, alpha is 0.3, oops, 3.2, not 3.4, 0.32 over two, so alpha over two is the 0 0.16. So that total region, the total pink region is alpha, and you divide it equally into those two parts, those give you your alpha over two. So a confidence interval will always have two z values, and we call those z alpha over two. And so that leads me to maybe a little bit more 
formalizing. We're not done, but we're going to do some steps along the way. The first step is this, is our confidence interval is normally written as x minus z alpha over 2 times sigma less than mu less than x plus z alpha over 2 times sigma. Now we're actually going to be making two more changes or, uh, as we develop this idea, but that's where I wanted to start today. All right, what I want to do is we're going to go to another screen now. We have our, our basic language, and let's take a look at how confidence interval works. So uh, let's do this. Let's see, I can't remember how much of my picture I get to keep, I get to come along with me. All right, and it looks like quite a bit of the picture is visible to us. So let's do this. And okay, uh, here we're, here's what I want to do now. Let's let's go back to a problem that we've a problem that we've seen before. And that problem is the is the normal distribution that has a mean of 70 and a standard deviation of 4. If you recall, that was the height, average height of American males. It has a mean of 70 and a standard deviation of 4. So let's label our normal curve. I have a mean of 70. So if I went below the mean, I would go 70 minus 4 for a 66 and a 62. And you could keep going. And then if I went to the right, I would have a 74 and then a 78 and so on. Well, here's what I want to do. Let's start, let's first apply this confidence interval. So let's do this. Suppose, suppose we randomly select, we randomly select a male, a male at, oh, let's make it about, uh, how about 67 inches? Sure, how about that? Uh, no, we can make it 68. No, let's do 67. Make it easier. At 67 inches. Use a confidence interval. I'm just going to abbreviate. Uh, we'll write it out one more time. I'll just write it this way. Confidence interval to estimate estimate the true true mean. Okay, well let's just use what we have. Um, oh, and the true mean at 68% at confident. confidence. Or you could say at 68% confidence level, that would be the same. Okay, and so I guess I could write confidence level. There we go. So let's do that. Well, what we do is we use our formula again, and our formula, I'll write it again, is x minus. Now, because we're using a 68% confidence level, we already know that z, the z score is gonna be minus one times sigma, which is four, which is less than mu, which is less than, uh, oh, whoops, I wanted to write the general formula first. x minus z alpha over two, times sigma less than mu less than x minus z plus z alpha over 2 times sigma. Now a 68% confidence interval, what that means is this. It means that you're going to shade exactly the middle 68% of the curve. So this would be the 0.68. So our confidence interval is is based on this green region. And so if that's the region that we're looking for, then the corresponding z-scores are, are the z-score for 66 and the z-score for 74. Well, those we already know, those z-scores for 0.68, that's just plus or minus one. Those are my z alpha over twos. So let's write that in. What do we have now? We have uh, x minus 1 times the standard deviation of 4 less than mu less than x plus 1 times 4. 
Oh, and x, well, we know x. x was the person that we selected. So let's put that in there. That's uh, 67 minus 4 less than mu less than 67 plus 4. And if I clean these up, 67 minus 4 is 63 less than mu. 67 plus 4 is 71. So look at what we've just done. We randomly selected a male that was 67 inches tall. So right there. And then using our, our level of confidence of 0.68 and the known standard deviation of 4, we said that the, the mean is somewhere between 63, so that would be down here, and up to 71. So it would be right, right there. And that was it. That is our confidence interval. And as you can see, the mean of 70 is in that interval. Well, this brings up two concerns. There's two concerns here. And let me write these down. Uh, one of our concerns that probably jumped off the page at you is, is this, the size of the interval. The size, the size of the, the confidence interval. I mean, think about this, 63 to 71 inches. A person that's 63 inches tall is only 5 feet 3 inches. Versus a person 71, that would be 5 feet 11 inches. So if you were to compare these two people, these two gentlemen, it would be more of something like, like this. Their, their, their size comparisons would be so dramatically different that you're like, well, that's a pretty easy, uh, pretty easy interval to use, and it's not very helpful because that's a huge variation in the size of people. So first thing we need to do is we need to adjust the size of the confidence interval. That's the first one that we're going to fix. Uh, two is the the other the other concern is you know I randomly selected a person that was 67 inches tall well it's not unlikely that I would have selected a person that was maybe taller than this it, for example if I selected a person that was under that was below 66 inches then I wouldn't have gotten the mean if I selected a person that was 70 over 74 inches just slightly above then the mean wouldn't the the mean would have been uh, looking like maybe in a purple color. Then if I selected a person at 74, I would have just missed the mean on just missed it. And so in that case, in in other words, in other words, we're um, it's pretty likely to select someone, and we're just not even going to have the right size. So two, we need to check the size of the interval. And on three is, we're not very confident yet. Not confident. Okay, so there's two fixes. First fix, let's do that. So number one, number one, my first fix is the central limit theorem. Here it is again, the central limit theorem. And if you recall, the key takeaway on the central limit theorem is that, is that the mean of the, is that when you tar start taking samples and you represent groups by their average, that then we get a normal distribution. The mean state of the population is the same as the mean of the central limit theorem. You get a normal distribution and we get one more thing and that is, is that we get a new standard deviation. We call it standard error of the mean, sigma sub x bar, and that's sigma divided by the square root of the sample size. What that has the effect of doing is, is it narrows the normal distribution. We spent quite a bit of time looking at that. Well, let's try this. What if my, so now instead of just selecting a single male, what if we select maybe four males? Well, what would happen? Well, then my, my, my curve, or my equation would become something like this. And so now, we wouldn't write that x 
equals 67 anymore. What we would, this becomes, this becomes x bar equals 67. So the probability now is we in not just a single male, but a group of four males that have an average height of 67 inches. Well, what does that change? That changes my formula now to two things. We have an x bar, uh, and we're still gonna use our z as one, so, but I'll write the formal equation, z alpha over two, and now and we're gonna replace just a sigma with a sigma over the square root of n and see how this changes it. So that's gonna be mu less than x bar plus z alpha over two times sigma over the square root of n. And we still are at six, uh, confident, or confidence, confidence at, uh, 68%, so because of that, z alpha over two is still going to be the one. Okay, so let's plug this in. So I have 67 minus one times, the standard deviation is four. The groups, there are four, so it's over the square root of four, less than mu, less than 67 plus one times the standard deviation of four divided by the square root of the samples of size four. Well, this becomes 67 minus, well, the square root of four is two. Four divided by two is two, so 67 minus two is 65, less than mu. And this is gonna be 67 plus two, well, that's going to be 69. Now, two things have just happened here. Notice now the interval interval is smaller and that's what we wanted now our, our people aren't going to be so close so far apart in height I mean originally we were this was eight inches apart that was a lot well now now we're only four inches and so if we pick up the mean we know we're getting pretty close I mean four inches is still a fair bit of difference between two people but imagine if we bump this up to n is 16. Oh wait, before I do that, let's look at this. The other thing is, is now with this mu, I'm gonna uh, write in another color, how about we we'll use this kind of golden color. At 67 for our average, notice though this, we didn't pick up, we went from 65 to 69, well now, be, by making the interval smaller, we missed the mean. So that creates another problem. Okay, so that leads us to part two, and that is our fix. How do we fix that? So part two, we're gonna come to a new page. Uh, part two, we're gonna come up here. And that is this, is two. More confident, we wanna be more confident more confident. So the most traditional confidence intervals are 90%, 95 percent, and 99 percent confident. Okay, and now we're going to use the empirical rule today, but if you want to be really accurate, you can, you would look these up on your table and you can find the corresponding z-scores. So, uh, but let's try this. Let's, um, we're going to use, use 95% uh, confident, confidence, and based, uh, we'll use based, based on empirical rule. Well, the empirical rule says this. It says that if, oh, well, let me label this. We have 70, uh, here's a 74 and 78. We have 66 and 62. Now, if I want to be 95% confident, according to the empirical rule, that's one, that's two standard deviations. So 
that's now we're looking at 95 or 0.95. So it's this green region, look at we've expanded our confidence quite a bit. And in doing so, in doing so, what we did is now our z alpha over 2 score is 2. So we've expanded the green region by becoming more confident. Well, let's see how that affects our problem. Now, we still have a, an average. We ran, what did we, we selected a group of four, a group of four at um, 67 inches. That was our x bar. All right, so let's try this now. Well, this becomes 67 minus 2 times 4 divided by the square root of 4 is less than mu, less than 67 plus 2 times 4 divided by the square root of the sample size. Well, now this just becomes... The square root of 4 is 2, it's 2's cancel, so 67 minus 4, that's going to be 63 mu less than 64, 67 plus 4 is 71. And sure enough, now by doing that, look at that, we picked up, we just picked up the mean again, and that would be my new confidence interval right up here. Okay, so by so by what we do is we we and we get draws increasingly large sample sizes. So four is actually very small. The ideal number really is once you start getting n is 25 or above, then the uh, the power of the central limit theorem really takes effect very quickly. And so let's just try that really quick. So if, for example, if n if n is 25 at 95% confidence, well, what would we get? Well, we'd have our average is still 67 um, minus 2 times 4. It's the standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. Less than mu. Less than. 67 plus 2 times 4 divided by the square root of 25. Well, let's see. That's going to be 4 fifths. It's going to be um, 8, 8 fifths. I think that's like 1.6. So if I subtract 165, subtract oh, 66, 65.4, I think. I'll let you double check that, less than mu. And then we add 1.6, so that would be 68.6. Now, look at this. Notice that we missed the mean. Now, obviously, if we were doing this in practice, we wouldn't have really known that. Um, we would have an idea of what the mean might be. But here's something else. It's very, very unlikely that this would actually happen. And, and it, it, because now our 67, our problem has become narrowed into this very tiny little piece. Our new confidence interval is like this. So if you actually miss, if you actually miss the mean when you're being 95% confident and you're sampling sizes of 25 or larger, chances are you're looking at some kind of a unique population. Uh, and also a couple more things about this. One is this. Uh, oh, so a 95% confidence interval is read like this. And what it means is that a 95, it's, you'd say that um, a 95% confident confidence means means that means that if groups of size 25 are sampled then 95 out of 
100 samples, 100 intervals. Oops. Intervals will contain will contain the true mean. And when we say that true mean, we're just talking about mu. Okay. Uh, a closing remark, and that is this: is is that sometimes, sometimes you may not even know sigma. Uh, you may not know sigma. And uh, if if sigma is unknown, if sigma is unknown, we cannot find a confidence interval. Then, period, then, or the best, the, the best estimate, estimate of the mean is is whatever you sample is x bar and that is called and this is called this is called a point a point estimate of the mean or of mu and why is it important well ideally you, you would have an interval because you can you're going to be more likely to actually be representative of the mean. But sometimes you just don't have that luxury. And if you don't, then the best, instead of an interval, to, then you just use a single value. And using a single value, we call that a point. So a point estimate would be your last ditch effort if you can't find a confidence interval. All right, I think we're going to stop there. I hope that helps, and thanks for watching.